a little video about this Hitachi uh, D10VC. So this is a classic Hitachi. Kind of sad about Hitachi. They got into the power tool business. I think it was in the 90s. Uh, may have been the late 80s. Really tried for a few decades and just couldn't quite. Uh, Hitachi is a huge conglomerate, a massive corporation. So it was just a, another essentially business opportunity. I mean, they do shipbuilding and all sorts of stuff. So make heavy duty, uh, you know, make construction equipment, earth moving equipment. So they had a big engineering team, decided to jump into the power tool business and found that, like many other businesses, it is ultra competitive. And finally sold their power tool division, the Metabo, a few years ago. But this is a more classic Hitachi. Basic 3 8 drill. 1800 RPM, 3.2 amps. The rating at 350 watts. A very rare made in Ireland. Same makes sense. Green tools made in Ireland. Very rare to find any power tools made in Ireland. So I kind of like that. As far as, the, you know, I had reviewed that Black & Decker. And uh, this is much better. Much better drill just to say that and it's more of the classic style that i like it seems pretty heavy duty i did get one in pretty nice condition it seems like this is either a nylon or polycarbonate body and then the diaphragm seems to be made out of something even you know maybe that's what's polycarbonate and it's nylon for the rest of the body i like that it has four screws that hold on the gearbox this is essentially a professional grade drill it has ball bearings so there isn't any play in the, the spindle it doesn't pull in and out but they did use a Jacobs multi-craft chuck. American-made chuck, Irish-made drill, but it is not the heavy-duty or industrial Jacobs. This is the cheaper Jacobs. And that was always kind of the thing about the Hitachi tools is they're always kind of nice. They just had interesting styling, and there's always, like, some aspect that they really kind of chintz out on or cheapened out on just to try to hit uh, some price targets, although overall they are were professional-duty drills. I really like uh, this unit. Uses a high speed motor. Since this is only 1800, or this is 1800 RPM, it's only a double reduction. It has, interestingly enough, the reverse levers on the top, which I kind of find that's an odd location for it. But it does have the, you know, throttle stop. And I like that they have a plus and minus on it. This trigger is not very good at all, really narrow. But what is interesting, you can just see right there, the little ball detent. So this, uh, adjusting the speed of this drill is really nice because it tends to stay in the same location with that detent. And you get definitive clicks. And minus this some more. So if there's certain situations, say when you're doing polishing and you just want to have it be at a particular speed, you can just adjust the switch. And if it's just a little too fast, you can just do a couple notches. So I actually like that a lot. And the other thing that I thought is interesting is it retains a side handle. And you th this is a coarse metric thread. You think, why on earth does a 3 8 uh, relatively high speed 1800 RPM drill have a provision for a side handle? And that really is, you know, you'd use a drill like this for polishing headlights. You'd use it for sand with sanding discs. And so the, a side handle just makes things easier. You know, you can hold it, allows you to grip it hold it in other various positions and helps keep the venting pretty open but on this drill you don't have to worry about it too much and i really like that about it is the venting is full 360 degrees so even if you're holding it like this or grabbing it you know over the top like this you still have plenty of venting to keep it cool so really not a bad tool anyway i'm going to run the same drill bit i did uh with that black and decker video i did just uh, about a week ago but remember that this thing is 50% faster with only a slightly more powerful motor. But the difference is, is it has a high-speed motor. And why that would make a difference is you can have the same amount of power. But if the motor spins at thousands of RPM more quickly, then you can have a larger gear reduction. So you can actually have more output power, more power out of the motor just because it's spinning faster and allows you to have a greater amount of gear reduction. That's really one of the things that makes the difference of a professional drill so yeah 1800 rpm this is a three quarter inch installers bit as a hole in it and a really thin shank that's how you know it's an installers bit this is what you know internet technicians cable tv technicians use to drill holes through the walls to run through run the cable so they end up having real sharp tips and then they have a hole so you can <laughs> tie a piece of wire to the uh, cable and then pull the drip bit out and draw your cable back in 
But when I did that Black & Decker video, I also compared to the DeWalt 996, DCD 996 20 volt max, and it ran this bit just fine at 2000 RPM, where the 1200 RPM Black & Decker barely had any difference. So this only has 0.2 more amps, yet it's geared down 50% less, but also has a much higher speed motor. So let's uh, just see how it does. Still slipping even though I really uh, tightened down on that chuck quite a bit. But that should prove my point. This is 50% faster than that Black & Decker, only 0.2 more amps. Yeah, so on paper it would be much weaker, but just that gear, having a high speed motor and being a more professional grade tool and being able to surge more amps, it performs just as well as that drill that was much slower. So really the point of that exercise was not just to demonstrate this, but to also show that surprisingly enough, uh, two tools that have the same amount of, same amperage rating motor may have vastly different actual <laughs> performance that they deliver. I do like this cord. It's very supple. They actually include a proper strain relief. A lot of manufacturers, even DeWalt and Milwaukee, are guilty of not having very good strain relief on the cord end, even Makita, yet uh, the Hitachi did. Anyway, might as well knock this handle off just to uh, take a look inside. I think this is polycarbonate. And a long time ago, I learned actually from one of my uh, viewers that said, if you take apart these power tools and they have fine thread screws and it indicates that it would be a harder plastic like polycarbonate, in this case, these are coarse thread plastic screws. So that may be more in indicative that this is indeed a nylon body. If we can't get this thing to want to, something stuck. All right, it was the reverse switch that was stuck, so there's our reverse switch. And you can see one of the reasons why it's odd to have this switch up here is just because you got these wires that are kind of just uh, in odd locations. It does just use Bakelite brush holders, so that's unfortunate. We can see that it does have fine bars on the motor. They are just folded over crimped connections. So I guess, it, you know, this is, would be considered a standard grade or what most man heavy duty even heavy duty manufacturers do the welded contacts is pretty much reserved for only high power motors uh but they did a pretty good job we can see it has very low wear because there's almost no discoloration you can't feel any kind of groove in the commutator there a lot of wasted space up here and you can see you know they should have had just the integrated matchstick reverse that way they could have had a cutout in the top of the drill and had a belt hook what I do like is this power switch. Look at that. It has actual screw terminals. So super easy to swap wires and you don't have to crimp any special connectors or anything. Did want to point out something you don't see very often. Washers on the screws. Very few power tool manufacturers still using washers. Actually, even Hitachi isn't, but uh, sometimes they don't make them like they used to. Might as well take a quick look at the gears. Those are pretty tight. Longer ones on top, shorter ones on bottom. What on earth is going on with this one? Ooh, that is a pretty tight fit. So, pretty nice. Looking at the motor when we were inside, it did have a ball bearing at the back, so the motor has ball bearings on both ends. We know by this chuck the fact that it does not move in and out. You can see a lock ring that's under there. They do have a couple of flats to make removing the chuck easier. 
there's a ball bearing in front, but they did put a sleeve bearing right there. The interesting thing about these sleeve bearings when they are round, this one's actually pretty big. We can see why on earth would they use one that's that thick is that there's probably another model a little bit nicer that did have a ball bearing. So potentially you could extract the sleeve and you measure, you know, the diameter of that pin and the outer diameter of this and you could find another uh, actual rolling bearing to swap in there which would be a pretty minimal but it would be a slight upgrade of course getting this one out would not be easy <laughs> really the easiest way would be to put fill that little hole with grease and find a drill bit that's as close to uh but to that size without going over and you put the drill bit in there and then you tap it with like a plastic or even a metal hammer but kind of gently and that will cause hydraulic pressure to, to go up, you know, it can't come out this hole because you're using such a tight fitting drill bit. So instead, when you tap on it, you use a hydraulic pressure and the bearing will slip up a little bit. And then you'll pull the drill bit out, put a little more grease in there and tap on it again. And you'll just turn the bearing into a hydraulic piston and you'll slowly be able to lift it out. I do like the fact that it does have uh, helical cut gears. So that's pretty nice too. Anyway. Just wanted to do a video about this Irish made, if we could get this to focus, there we go, about this Irish made Hitachi 3 8 general utility drill and uh, thought I would <laughs> share it with you. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.